The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning we are, you may be seated. So this morning we are continuing in our sermon, summer sermon series, try saying that one five times fast, Messages from Matthew. And the title of this sermon is Finding Rest. So I want to try something this morning, make sure you guys are awake, and I'm going to have you raise your hands if something that I say also applies to you. So first, I want to say, if you would raise your hand with me, if you have felt tired sometime this past week. There we go. If anyone didn't raise their hand, I need to know your secret. So now, if you felt busy sometime in the past week, would you raise your hand? Yep, right there with you. Anyone like me feel like you've had too much going on? Yeah, yeah, a few of us. (laughs) So this morning, what Jesus is saying to us is something that we all need to hear. And that is, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Some of you in hearing that would almost want to raise your hand again and say, yes, that is exactly how I feel. I know being in college the past three years, weary is a good description of staying up all night, or for most of it, studying for the test the next morning or later that week. And and heavy laden is a perfect description of looking at the long list of things that need to be done in a week, wondering how it's all going to get done. Now I'm in my first job post-college, working here this summer, and things haven't really slowed down a lot. (laughs) And I don't really know why I expected them to. Um, But my parents worked, I've watched them go to work, come home, still have so much to do, and that's just the way life is. We almost seem to think that busyness is a virtue, in our modern culture. We brag about it to one another. We almost, it's almost a competition to see who has the most going on in, in the least amount of time. We are tired, but it's almost like we like to be tired. And if we're being honest with ourselves, that's the, the sickness of the sin inside of us. Because God commands us to rest which should also be unsurprising because everything that God ever tells us to do is for our own good and for his glory. And and those two things really go hand in hand because things that are good for us bring glory to God and and things that bring glory to God turn around and and bring good to us who are his children and, and celebrate with what he's doing in the world. So other translations of this passage, they say those who labor or those who are heavily burdened instead of of weary or, or heavy laden, but the solution remains the same in every translation, and that's come to me. We are to rest in Jesus. So before we go any further in the progression of this passage, I'd like to go back to the beginning and really, really stop and see what, what Jesus is claiming here. He is claiming that if, if we ever want to find the rest that God offers, it has, we have to come to him. In verse 27, he says, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Did you catch it? The claim is is much bigger than, than Jesus just claiming to be God's rest that he's offering. He is claiming to be the one true God, and that is why we must go to him if we want to find rest. I want you guys to imagine something with me. I want you to imagine that you're a doctor 
as some of you may be and most of us aren't, that, um, and someone has come into your office and you, you realize that they have a horrible cancer that will most certainly kill them if they don't receive the treatment. Now also imagine that, that you have this miraculous treatment that will save their lives, but it will also change it. Because you've seen this treatment before and people who go through it, their lives are forever changed by it. So as, as the doctor, you're looking at this person and, and you're worried. Uh, will, they, will they want the treatment, seeing the life change that people experience? Or, or will they not even believe that they're sick because they don't want to see the symptoms? What do you do? My hope is that you would stop at nothing to help them understand the gravity of the problem, but also the availability and the miraculousness of the treatment. I want to expand the metaphor a little further, and I want you now to imagine that everyone across the whole world has this cancer. Some of us have been saved from it. We've received the treatment, and now the burden of of helping other people get treatment rests on us and you. You see, it's really no metaphor at all. The cancer is sin. All of sin and fallen short of the glory of God, and that separates us from God. You see, in the treatment, it is faith in the gospel. And the gospel is the Bible's message that that we that we have sinned, but that a Savior has come, and His name is Jesus. You see, there are two things that are true of all people. The first one is that we are all beautiful, because we have been made in the image of God Himself. Now, there's debate about what exactly that means, but what people can agree upon is is that we all have a dignity and a value as humans because of the way that God has made us like him in some ways. The second truth for all people is that we are all deeply broken by sin, and that creates separation from God. But you see, the good news is that God loved us far too much to leave us that way. He loved us so much that he would would leave heaven and step down to earth, wrapping himself in flesh to become the person of Jesus Christ. He faced every temptation that you or I will ever experience. But unlike us, he never sinned. He overcame every temptation. He lived the life that we could not and died the death that we deserve. He who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus walked out of his tomb and offers anyone who would have faith in him as Lord the same. We will walk out of ours too if we have faith in him. That is the person that is turning to us and and telling us to come to him. He offers us rest, but he also says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. My burden is light. We must rest in Jesus before we can ever share the gospel that saved us with the world. Like doctors holding the cure that our dying world desperately needs, we have been burdened with spreading the gospel to our families, our friends, our community, and our world. But the yoke that Jesus puts on our shoulders is easy. This burden that he has entrusted us with is light. It is the only purpose in a life that is otherwise, as the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible would say, meaningless. We are to always be sharing the gospel, just only sometimes use words. You see, Jesus wants us to find rest, but what does that look like? He wants us to come to him, not to our couches. That's just a distraction. That's going to the world for rest. And I don't know about you, but if I'm tired and busy and all those other things we talked about in the beginning, 
If I go and, and sit on the couch, I get up more anxious and worried and busy and tired than when I sat down. So what is the answer? Well, earlier in the book of Matthew, Jesus gives his famous Sermon on the Mount. And in it, he says, Do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or for your body as to what you will put on. For your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. He ends his, this part of his sermon with Jesus' cure for anxiety. And that is, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Every day has enough trouble of its own. Paul will address this same topic in his letter to the Philippians. He writes, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence, and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things, and the God of peace will be with you. So what's the solution? Jesus says, we seek first his kingdom. We seek the things that Jesus would seek, and, and we will have provision. He will provide for us. He promises that. Paul's solution would be to, this goes right along the same line, to make our requests made known to God. And that gives us peace. Also, he says that if we dwell on what is good, the word and the promises of God, that peace will be given to us. So, how do we apply that? We, we do what Jesus says to do. We come to him. I believe that Jesus wants us to come to him not only now on a Sunday morning for an hour. I believe he does want that. But I believe that he also wants more than that. I believe that he wants us to meet with him daily so that we can lay our worries at our feet, making our requests made known to him and dwelling on his word, what is good. So my question for you is, is do you have time set aside every day, even 15 minutes, where you can pray and, and read and, and dwell on the word of God? And if not, I invite you to start trying that this week. Try to even do it three days, maybe not even all seven. But I guarantee you, you will start to receive the peace and the rest that Jesus is offering. I know what I'm asking you is, is not easy because we always feel busy and we don't have enough time and, and the solution is to take aside more time. I'm the one up here telling you to do this and, and I struggle with it myself. But I know that this rest that Jesus is offering, when I'm dwelling on his word and, and able to, to get in perspective with what my troubles are again, it all seems a little easier. So I wanted to share with you um, a story from my Bible study that I led this past year in College Station. So we would have a study on Thursday nights and we'd come meet together on campus. And when people that usually came wouldn't show up, I would you know, send them a text sometimes saying, hey, we miss you tonight, hope we'll see you next week. And their, their response was pretty much always the same. And that was, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't come, I had to study. As you see, in, in their minds, studying the Word of God or their textbooks was what they was the trade-off, and you know, in in their minds or at least in their excuses, that was it. But but that wasn't the case. That wasn't true. Yes, they may have had a test on Friday morning and needed time Thursday night to study, but there were hours that week that spent on social media and hanging out with their friends and watching Netflix and being a part of other organizations and and just generally procrastinating. You see, for those of us that aren't in college anymore, the, the distractions may look different, but the fundamental problem is the same. And it's that, that we don't spend the time that we do have with him. So as I've been teaching here 
this summer I, in Sunday school and uh, the Thursday night young adult Bible study over Ephesians or the Wednesday study of other religions, I've, I've seen kind of on their own these three things kind of pop up in every talk that I've given. They've probably already been in this sermon as well. But the first one is that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. The second is that fighting sin is a response to all that Jesus has done for us. And that God only tells us to do what is best for us. The third is that our purpose is to be used by God to spread the gospel that saved us to the people around us so that they too may find salvation in Jesus. So my questions are, how can we, we share the gospel if, if we aren't fighting the sin in our lives so that we look differently from the world around us? And how can we fight sin and, and mold our lives to look different if we aren't, aren't reminded of all that Jesus has done for us by praying with, to him and, and dwelling on his word? And, and how can we, we have time to pray to him and dwell on his word if, we've, if we haven't set t- time aside to spend with him? And the answer is simple. We, we can't. I, I can't. You can't. We, we need Jesus. We need him to pour into us if we ever want to pour out into our world. So come to Jesus and find rest. Lay your worries at his feet. He wants to take them. Spend time in the Bible, his word. Dwell on what is good. And then reach out to the world with the good news about Jesus that saved you so that others can find salvation in him as well. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you this morning. God, I pray that that we would go out and, and spend that time with you this coming week. God, help me with that. I need it. And help everyone else as well. God, equip us to spread your good news to the world around us, to the people in our lives who we know need to hear it. God, I pray that the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened, that we would know the hope to which we have been called and the the riches of your glorious inheritance in us who are your children. According to the working of your great might which you worked in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Amen.